overview. So what actually is PHP and how does it fit in to the full stack of web development? We're also going to have a look at the basics of actually getting PHP set up on the computer, and then we'll update our knowledge of control systems so that we can actually utilize them inside PHP as well. And good news, guys, uh, there isn't too much of a difference between running files in PHP and also from JavaScript. So you'll notice that the information that we've been learning is actually applicable to a wide range of programming languages. Let's go ahead and get ourselves started with the class now. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and start now with our first topic of the day, and that is what actually is PHP. So, guys, PHP is actually an acronym, and that means that it stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Now, this is quite unusual because PHP actually stands for itself, uh, but that's because it actually used to be called something called Personal Homepage, and they decided that PHP Hypertext Preprocessor was a better name for PHP. So they renamed it to something quite unusual. It's a self-referencing acronym for those of you guys who are interested in uh, the English language or language in general. So PHP, guys, it is a server-side scripting language, and it's designed for web development. So when I say server-side, I mean that all of the processes occur on the web server that will eventually deliver a completed HTML, CSS, and JavaScript web page to a user. So all of the processes, guys, are done on the server. It's also a scripting language, and this is very similar to JavaScript, in that it's not compiled. We don't need to know what compiling is, because we're not studying software programming, but in short, it's a little bit easier for us to get set up and start using it than with a compiled language. Also, guys, it's specifically designed for web development. This means that all of the structures and architecture that it has are specifically designed to make it as easy as possible for us to create web pages with it. And that's part of the reason that I've selected it as the language to be taught in this course. All right, so uh, we know about the backend modules at the moment. Of course, everything sits, uh, everything as part of the backend sits inside our web server or our web server wrap, whatever that might be. We've had a look at Apache, which is the web server software itself that's responsible for actually managing the network processes that delivers web pages to a user's browser. The next thing, of course, is our backend code module. In our case, it's PHP, but just about any backend language, uh, such as C Sharp, um, the ASP framework, all of that cool stuff, all of them will work as a backend module. We're going to learn from the perspective of PHP, but it's not too much of a jump to expand your knowledge to a different backend language. The final part of the backend, guys, that we will be looking at in our next lesson is, of course, the database server software. We're doing MariaDB in this course, but, again, database knowledge is relatively applicable to all databases once you've learned the basics of SQL. Okay. So, moving on, guys. What actually is PHP now that we're going to hone in on this particular language? Well, first of all, it's the self Referential acronym, as I mentioned, but its primary function, guys, is to generate HTML code. It can be embedded directly into HTML code or in a separate document, if you so prefer. And the final key point, guys, about PHP is that it actually executes entirely on the web server, as I've mentioned, and not in the web browser like JavaScript. So, guys, embedded means that we can actually put it directly into a HTML file, and it'll actually work just like JavaScript would or CSS would, except, of course, again, it executes before that page is actually processed and sent out to the user's browser. So its primary function, again, is to generate HTML code. So we're actually going to be using PHP to create dynamic sections of HTML so that instead of having to have statically typed HTML, which is what we've been doing up until this point, well, we can now use PHP to actually dynamically generate HTML based on the needs of that particular web page. All right, guys. So how do we actually get set up with using PHP? Uh, the first step, guys, is to enable it on our web pages. Until now, all of our web pages have had the .html extension. And that's perfect if you want to write just HTML. But to make PHP work on a web page, we actually will need to change this extension to .php. 
What this does is ensures that the PHP module on your web server will actually scan the file and will actually process the PHP code inside it. And then it will run the code if it exists. So to give you guys an example, let's say you have a standard piece of HTML and you want to add some PHP into it. You can rename the file to .php and then you can add PHP code to that file after which the PHP uh, module will scan that file and then it will actually output a .html file once it's finished and then that file is what gets sent to the user's browser. So let's have a quick look at an example of actually writing some PHP code. As you can see, because we can put PHP directly into a HTML document, all we have to do is create what's known as an opening and closing PHP tag. So this means that everything inside this PHP tag is considered part of the PHP language. We can write whatever we want between the opening and closing uh, their pseudo tags uh, inside our document. <clears throat> okay, so now that we know that PHP's main function is to generate HTML code, let's go ahead and show you guys exactly how this happens. When the server gets a request for a file, the PHP module on the server will scan that file if it's got the .php extension to make sure that there's some actual PHP code on the page. If, it is, if there is, then the code will execute and generate HTML. And what it'll do after that is get any data from the database that it needs in order to perform its tasks. After that, uh, the page which originally contained PHP code will only contain HTML, and this page is then set back through the internet to the browser that requested it. The key point here, guys, is that because PHP executes on the web server, it will only send back the HTML code to the web browser. This means that people using a web application will never be able to see our actual PHP code because it's never sent to them. And this is, of course, extremely important for security reasons because PHP code is generally uh, will contain important connection information for your database and people could use that information to access data that they shouldn't be able to see. Using PHP will let us send only what we want users to see and it will be done in a secure way as well. So, let's have a quick look now at PHP in the full stack. Uh, this is all the way back from lesson five, but now we've added a new piece of knowledge to our knowledge base. So this pro diagram will probably make a little bit more sense than it did before. So we have the user on his computer, and what he does is he makes a request to the internet for a particular website. The internet, using its network and HTTP protocols, will find the appropriate web server for whatever domain name uh, is the website that they're trying to access. At this point, guys, this is where web development comes in. We've got Apache, which will have a conversation with its hard disk, and then whatever PHP code needs to run gets sent to the PHP module on that server. This PHP module will have a conversation with the database, and then it will send back information to the web server, at which point the HTML is ready to be sent back through the internet and to the user's browser. Okay, so guys, quick uh, quick question before we get into this particular section. Does anyone know what statement is used in PHP to write to the HTML document? We already know how to do it in JavaScript, but it's something a little bit different in PHP. Hopefully, uh, you guys will know the answer by the end of this section. A few people coming in with the right answer already, which is brilliant. But don't worry, guys, for those of you who don't, I will be showing you in this section now after I boot up Notepad++ for the first time. All right, guys. So as you can see, I have a very empty Notepad++ page. Uh, we're going to be doing stuff, including building HTML, in a little while. But for now, what I'm actually just going to do is have raw PHP. So I'm going to have my opening PHP, whoops, my opening PHP tags and my closing PHP tags, and I'm going to save this file inside my XAMPP HTDoc subfolder. So let's go ahead and navigate to where I'm supposed to go, this PC. I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to go to the XAMPP subfolder. 
and I need to put it in the htdoc subfolder, guys, or else it won't be run through the server, and the PHP won't be processed. So very important that if you want to run PHP, it has to go into the htdoc subfolder of exam. So let's go ahead and put it inside here, and I'm going to go into the lesson six, and I'm going to delete all of these because we're going to create them uh, from scratch ourselves. And we're going to call this the index.php file because, again, guys, we're going to be create, writing PHP into this document, and as a result, we need the .php extension. Okay, so I'm going to save this now, guys, and, of course, the formatting has worked out. We now can see that these PHP tags are recognized by Notepad++. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is show you how to write information directly into the HTML document with PHP. To do that, we need to use a, um, the echo statement, which is the way that you can write information to a HTML element with PHP. So you simply type the keyword echo, guys, and then in quotation marks, we can write whatever we'd like. So we're going to go whatever I like, or this is written by PHP. Of course, guys, just like in JavaScript, you have to end every statement that you make with a semicolon so the PHP knows that you're finished with that particular command. All right, so now that I've saved this, guys, I'm going to run it in my browser, but I'm going to immediately make a mistake, and I'd like to see if you guys can figure out what I'm doing wrong. I'm going to click on the Run button here, and I'm going to click on Launch in Chrome. And oops, it's opened up on my other page here, so I'm just going to drag it over here. You'll notice, guys, that it's actually printing all the words that I have actually written into that document. Now, does anyone know what I did wrong and what caused this to happen? Let me have a quick look. Uh, you have to run through your local host from Christopher. Very good. Um, let's see. You should run the HTML file. That happened to me. You need to go to localhost. You have to open localhost. There's no HTML container. That's actually correct. It's not the answer I'm looking for right now, though. Um, Apache server not running. Very good. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we got to go to localhost forward slash uh, file. Very good. From William and Asma as well. Uh, I think you have to open your localhost. All right, guys. So for those of you guys who were saying that you have to run it through localhost, you are absolutely correct. Don't forget that we went to a lot of effort to set up our local development environment, namely... Exam. So, what I've done right here is I've actually run the file through my local file system. So it's opening it directly. It's opening up this file directly. As a result, the PHP module isn't even asked to do anything. It doesn't know it's supposed to. So it doesn't process this information, and we get all of our very precious information being displayed to the world. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to run Exam. It's actually already running, so we've got our Apache and our MySQL modules already running. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close, we're going to open a new tab here. And instead of running it directly through the file system, we're going to run it through our browser and actually use the server. To use the server of XF, of course, we simply have to type in localhost. The next thing we need to do is tell it whatever folder name we happen to be looking in. I saved this file in a folder called Lesson 6. And then finally, we have to put in the file name. So I'm going to go ahead and write index.php. Now, guys, if I press Enter, there is no longer all of that very valuable, precious information showing it's actually outputted the echo statement properly like it's supposed to have done. So this is really great, guys. This is how we can protect all of the processes and all of the other stuff that we need to have a good, secure website. All right, so now that I've done my first PHP statement, what I'm actually going to do is create the document, uh, the HTML document around my PHP. So I'm going to create my doc type HTML declaration. I'm going to have my opening and closing HTML tags. I'm going to have the head of my document. I'm also going to have the body of my document. And, of course, finally, I need my title. So I'm going to have a title. Oops, title. My spelling is bad today. Uh, my title is going to be uh, Lesson 6, 
PHP. Okay, so you'll notice that, guys, I've got my PHP outside of my HTML document, so I'm actually going to put it inside my HTML document because I would be expecting to write all of my PHP into the body of the document for the most part. Uh, there will be situations where you don't want to do that, but we'll cover those in the advanced course. All right, so we've got PHP, guys, and now we can echo this is written by PHP or really anything that we like uh, inside our PHP. I'm actually going to show you a couple more things we can do with the echo statement. Just like in JavaScript, guys, we can write HTML tags directly into the document. So if I can create an opening and closing paragraph element and I refresh this page, you'll notice that it's now moved slightly because it's formatted like a paragraph. Now, uh, going back to the question that I think it was, was it Bart or Benjamin uh, asked a little bit earlier, will you see the PHP if you inspect the page? Now, what I'm actually going to do, guys, is I'm going to write the JavaScript equivalent of this echo statement, and then I'll show you the, secure, the security difference between PHP and JavaScript. So, guys, going back all the way to lesson five, our last lesson, to create some JavaScript, we need to have opening and closing script tags. Inside here, we can go ahead and just go document.write to call the JavaScript function, and we can say this is written by JavaScript. So, guys, this is essentially the exact same thing as what we did above in the echo statement in PHP. Whoops, but there are some very important differences that I will point out to you in just a moment. All right. I'm going to end my statement here as well. Okay, so now that I've saved this, guys, I'm going to refresh the page again. And, of course, we get this is written by PHP. And we've also got this is written like by JavaScript, just like what we expected. But if I right-click the web page and I click on inspect or view page source, you'll notice some very important differences. Let's just view page source for now. If you view the page source, you'll actually see what makes up the HTML document. And as you can see, all of the HTML inside this page is actually appearing just like normal, just like what we would have expected to see. However, some key differences, guys. The PHP isn't there. Only the results of the PHP, which is what we want to see, is there. We've got this is written by PHP, an opening and a closing paragraph. There is absolutely no sign that that was created or run by PHP. We don't know where that information comes from, how that information is put together. On the other hand, we can see all of the JavaScript that we've written. We've got the opening script tag. We've even got the function name that we used to get that JavaScript to write out to the HTML page. Now, guys, this is the key difference between PHP and JavaScript. JavaScript, you can see the entire source code on the internet. If it's on your computer, it's on your computer, and you can see it. However, with PHP, you never get sent that information at all, and you will never be able to see it. Okay, so let's just have a quick look and make sure that everything is okie-dokie. Yes, one thing I want to cover before we finish with the basics of PHP, guys, is that you can, of course, do calculations inside PHP, just like you would in JavaScript. So, for example, I can echo 5 plus 5. If I save this and refresh the page, I can close that now, you'll get the answer, which is, of course, 10. PHP can do any kind of calculation, just like JavaScript. We can ask it to divide 5 by 5. We can then ask it to multiply by 15. And then we can ask it to add 4 to the answer to that. So if I save this, guys, and refresh the page, the answer is 19, apparently. You can do any kind of calculation in PHP, just like you can in JavaScript. And the, the same is true, guys, of um, comparisons. You can ask if 5 is equal to 5. You can ask if 5 is less than 5. You can ask if 5 is greater than 5. All of the comparisons that you can do in any programming language, it's possible to do in PHP as well. Uh, okay, so, uh, one final thing that I want to talk about, guys, before we finish with the basics of PHP. We already know, guys, how to concatenate strings in JavaScript. And as a brief reminder for those of you guys who can't remember, 
String concatenation is joining two strings together. It's quite important when you start to build more complicated web applications. You can do it in JavaScript with the plus operator. In PHP, it's a little bit different, guys. We need to use a full stop to signify that we want to join two strings together. Just to give you an example, I can say, hello, this is string one, and then I can join it to another string with a full stop saying, and this is string two. So guys, I'm now going to concatenate these two strings together, and of course, if I save that and refresh the page, we get, hello, this is string one, and we also get, and this is string two, connected to it. It's all part of one string. Very important and very useful once we get into some of the more complicated things we can do, uh, which we will be demonstrating in lesson eight. All right, guys, uh, before we finish this section, I'd like to see if any of you guys can answer me this question. What statement is used in PHP to write out to the HTML document? Very good. Lots of people coming in with the correct answer. Echo smiley face from Nicholas. You're absolutely right, guys. Well done. The answer, of course, is the echo statement. So, control systems, guys, in PHP. We've already looked at the if statement, the for loop, and the uh, and arrays inside JavaScript. We're now going to have a look and see how similar and different they are in PHP. There are some notable but important differences that I will point out to you now. But, of course, as always, a quick question before we get into it. What function, guys, is used to declare an array in PHP? This is one of the big differences between PHP and JavaScript, and we'll be answering this, of course, in the next section. So do definitely uh, uh, keep your eyes out, and you can let me know the answer when we get there. All right, let's go ahead and get straight back into the PHP demo. We're going to open up Notepad++ once again. And we're going to start writing some more interesting stuff. Before we do that, though, guys, I have a few more things to show you about PHP. We already know that we can declare variables in JavaScript, and we can store any kind of data type we can imagine inside the JavaScript variable. Of course, in PHP, you can do the same thing. But there is a difference in how you declare a variable in PHP. For example, if I want to declare a basic string, so I'm going to create a basic string called my string. We need to have a dollar sign at the beginning of the name of the variable. So what happens, guys, is if you use the dollar sign, it means you're declaring or calling a variable uh, inside PHP. So I can say dollar my string is equal to this is a string, and I can end my statement as usual. So, if you're ever declaring a variable in PHP, you have to use the dollar symbol at the beginning of the name of your variable. But it doesn't end there. If you actually want to call a variable that already exists, you also have to use the dollar sign. So I can go ahead and try and echo my string there, but to echo my string, I again have to use the dollar sign to let it know that it's a variable that I am looking for. If, of course, I save this and refresh the page, we'll get this is a string outputted to the HTML document, which is exactly what we wanted. But it's worth it to note that we now have a variable in PHP called dollar sign my string. All right, so that's about it for uh, variables, guys. You can declare a variable and you can call a variable with the dollar sign. All right, so now we're going to get on to the control systems portion of the class. So let's start with the if loop. So to declare an if loop in PHP, guys, it's the same keyword. You just say if. And then you have opening and closing circular brackets, and you have opening and closing curly braces, just like in JavaScript. But inside the circular braces, the circular brackets even, sorry, guys, inside the circular brackets, we can do a standard comparison just like we did in JavaScript. So we can say if 4 is less than 5, we can go ahead and echo, hello, 4 is less than 5. So if I save this, guys, and refresh the page, of course, it writes out hello, 4 is less than 5, because, of course, 4 is less than 5. And that was the comparison that we were making. Of course, 
else loops and else if loops also work inside PHP. So we can go else echo uh, for uh, the comparison is false. Comparison is false. And we can end our statement there. So let's go ahead and change this to something that's not true, such as 45, 54 is less than uh, 2012, maybe. So 54, of course, is not less than 12, so we would expect it to not run this statement, but it will run this statement. If I save this, and I refresh the page, whoops, and I refresh the page, we get the comparison is false because the else statements ran and not the if statement. So if statements are basically the exact same guys as they were in JavaScript, but that's kind of where the differences end. We're going to talk about for loops and arrays now, and they are a little bit different to what you've seen before inside JavaScript. We're going to actually start with the for loop, just so that I can explain a few things. I'm going to write out this for loop now, guys, but I'm actually going to make a relatively subtle mistake. If you guys can spot it, that would be absolutely brilliant. If not, don't worry. Uh, it's very, it's, a, it's quite a sneaky mistake that I'm going to make. So, let's start out with this for loop. For i equals zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. The syntax is the exact same, guys, basically. And we're going to go ahead and say echo, this is the, and then we're going to concatenate the variable i, and then we're going to say i run of the for loop. And then we can end our statement. So, guys, what mistake did I make? Okay, very good, guys. Bunch of you guys coming in with the correct answer. Very impressive. Uh, yes, absolutely, guys. I didn't put a dollar sign in front of the variable i, because, of course, i is a variable. I need to continue to use the dollar sign every single time I talk about the i variable. So, now I've added the dollar sign to the front of the i variable. I'm going to save this now. And if I refresh the page, well, we get this is the zeroth run of the for loop. I haven't formatted this, so let's just quickly format this so it looks a little bit neater. Like that. If I save this, and go, this is the zeroth, first, two-thirds, and the fourth run of the for loop. So there you go, guys. We were able to run a for loop inside PHP, just like we've been doing so far in JavaScript. Okay, uh, the last thing that we need to cover in terms of control systems in PHP is, of course, the, um, the array declaration. So we're going to keep the for loop there so that we can display the contents of this array that we're going to create. I'm going to create an array now, and I'm going to call it my animal. And I'm going to set it equal to be an array function, and inside the array function, all of the arguments are going to be the elements of the array. And guys, this is a big difference to what you've seen in JavaScript before. Before, all we needed to do was use square brackets. But this time, we need to use uh, circular brackets, and we need to call the array function in order to make an array in PHP. So, can I have a few animals, guys, just two or three, and I'll add them into here, and then we can go ahead and test this out in our for loop. So we got platypus. All right, let's go ahead and add a platypus to our array. Of course, as always, guys, you separate different arguments inside a function with the comma symbol. So we got zebra. Uh, just going to take three or four guys. I'll take three. I'll take one more, guys. Uh, we're going to say earthworm. All right, that seems like a fun one. So we're going to go earthworm. All right, so now I've created an animals array, which has three elements in it. Thank you very much, guys, for all you have this way more people helping me out than there are places for uh, the words in my array. Okay, so let's go ahead and say for i equals zero, i is less than three, and then we're going to echo. Uh, let's change this to something that makes a little bit more sense. We're going to say the element in the array is, and then we're going to concatenate again, because we need to concatenate if we're adding PHP variables in. We're going to say the dollar, whoops, the dollar my animals, and of course, in the position i. So we can actually do the exact same thing, guys, as we did in JavaScript. We're accessing the my animals uh, uh, array, and we're accessing position i of the my animals array. So if I save this, and I refresh the page, 
Of course, we've got the element in the array is platypus, the element in the array is zebra, and of course, the element in the array is earthworm. Earthworm isn't an animal from Sarah. Thank you very much, Sarah. Ah, it was just a bit of fun, so it doesn't matter. Uh, final note, guys. Uh, instead of asking an array for its length with the dot length operator, it's slightly different inside PHP. Again, we need to use another function. And so instead of saying free, I can ask it for the array length of my animals each time. And I can just go ahead and use the size of function. So I go size of my animals. And then that should still work perfectly. So size of, guys, is a special function that checks how long an array is. It can also check how long a string is. It has multitudes of uses. All right, guys. So we finished with our PHP demo. I will be doing a few more things before we finish the class out. But for now, I'd like to ask you guys a quick question. Which function, guys, is called to declare an array in PHP? Just going to have a quick look at the questions box, make sure that people are coming in. The array function, we've got uh, array function, array, 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 array. Some people saying dollar sign, which is correct as well, sort of. <laughs> we've got array, array, array function. Very good, guys. Of course, we need to use the array function to create an array inside PHP. Okay, guys, so uh, before we finish up, I do want to show you guys some of the more interesting things that can be done in PHP and will really kind of show off exactly what the value of PHP is, especially relative to JavaScript. Aside from the security, uh, it's got some other uses as well. But first things first, I need to find my files. Here we go, just so that I don't forget what it is I'm supposed to be teaching you in this particular class. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. So, guys, we're going to be creating a HTML form for the first time, and we're going to send it to a PHP file. This means that the PHP file can process information sent from a user, and it can do really whatever it likes with it. It can add it to the database. It can go ahead and do a search on all the products. If it's a shopping website, you can go ahead and make sure that the user is a valid user if you're trying to log in. But let's say, let's just go ahead and create the files for now, and then I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So guys, to create a HTML form, we're going back to HTML just for a few minutes here, so you don't need to worry too much. We're going to forget about PHP for just a moment, but we'll go back to it uh, once we actually try to access the information that this HTML form is supposed to send. So to create a form in HTML, guys, we need to use the, you probably guessed it, the form HTML element. This form HTML element, guys, is the most important piece of HTML that you're ever going to learn, okay? Forms are how HTML is able to send information to the server. To create a form, we need a few pieces of information. We need an input, which you've actually seen before, but you finally, guys, will need a submission button. So this button is going to act as our submit button. Okay, so just for uh, today's example purposes, we're just going to go ahead and create some simple inputs. This input is going to be of type text, which means that you can enter any string that you like, and it's going to have a name of name. You haven't probably haven't seen this name attribute before. It's got no use in the context of HTML, really, but it is extremely important when we try to access that information with PHP. In fact, I'm actually going to change it to username so that it's distinct from the name of the actual attribute. So we've got username, and we're going to have an input, and the type is going to be equal to text, and its name is going to be equal to password. And then we're going to end our input there. Finally, guys, for every single form you will create, there needs to be a way of submitting the information to the server. So to do that, you need to have a button that has a type of submit. And then you can call the button anything you like. So I'm going to call this the login button because this is going to be a user login form eventually. It's just the raw basics for now. There's one, there's a couple of final things that we need to do, guys, to get this form to work. We need to tell this form what file to send this information to. To do that, we need to create the action attribute and set it to be equal to the name of the file on the server that we want to send it to. I haven't created the file yet, 
but we're going to be creating a file called process.php. So we're just going to call it the process.php file. And then finally, guys, we're going to need to use a method. The method that I'm going to be using in this particular instance is the post method because I'm sending data to the server. Just a quick uh, rewind on the method there. There are a few ways to send information in web applications. The first and most important for you to learn is the post method. We'll be looking at some of the other methods in the advanced course, but the post method is the most important. It's also very safe uh, for the most part, of course, and uh, it's the best way to go for now. So for now, we'll just be using the post method, and then all we need to know is that we have an action, and we have a method, and then we have information, and then we have a button, and then we're all ready to go. If I save this file, guys, and I refresh the page here, you'll see that I have two places to put information in, and then I have a login button. This login button will actually redirect us to a file called process.php. But of course, we haven't actually created that yet, so we're going to have to create it for now. But of course, I can enter anything I like, just like normal, into the input boxes. And then finally, if I click on the login button, it'll actually send the information inside those input boxes to the server. Does input not need to be closed from Isabel? Great question. I didn't actually clarify this. You guys probably have heard, seen some of the other HTML elements that we've come across in the past that don't need to be closed. The link element is not something that needs to be closed. And guys, input is another one. It's automatically self-closing. The reason for this is because there is no inner HTML in the HTML element that is the input. So no, you do not need to close an input HTML element. Type password. You're absolutely correct, but let's keep things simple for now, Matt. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, I don't know what your full name is. It's just ma. Uh, on my questions box. Uh, but yes, uh, you can, of course, change it to be equal to type password. Just actually, now that that point has been raised, you'll notice that my password input box actually shows the password. But for security reasons, you should really use the type password if you're ever looking for a password. All this does, guys, is it makes it so that anything you type into a box doesn't get displayed on the page. It just shows up as a series of dots. And this way, of course, if there's someone looking over the shoulders of someone trying to log in, well, then they won't see the password that's being typed. That's the only difference, guys, between a password box and a text box. All right, guys. So now we've created the HTML form, but we need to be able to send the information somewhere. So I'm going to create a new file here, and this is going to be a pure PHP file. There's going to be no HTML at all in this file. So I'm going to save it as process.php, and there's going to be absolutely no HTML on the page. The purpose of this file is only to check if that person's login details are valid. But how do we do that? Once the information is sent to this page, how do we retrieve that information from the page that sent it? Well, when you send information to a PHP page using the post method, it's very easy to get access to that information. We simply have to use dollar underscore post array. So this array, guys, will always contain all the information that we need that was sent from the page that was sending information to this page. However, accessing particular elements in this array is different. For those of you guys who are interested, this is called an associative array. And instead of putting a number inside here, like normal, we actually have to put in a string. And this string is going to be equal to whatever the name attribute of the input box was. In the case of this input, it's called username. So I'm gonna type in username here. And then in the case of the password box, it's the password. So we're going to go ahead and create another dollar underscore post, except that it's going to say password instead. So this variable's value, guys, is whatever the input's value was for the username field. We can go ahead and echo this information out just for testing purposes. We're going to go... Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We're going to go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, we're just going to put these in paragraphs so that we can see exactly what's going on. So go p dot, and then I'm just going to copy paste this, guys, twice 
so that we have it on separate lines, nice and neat, and this is going to be password instead. Okay, so we'll say your username is, and then we'll say your password is. This is, of course, not very useful. We shouldn't be doing this with PHP, but I just want to demonstrate to you that it's possible to receive this information from another page with PHP. Now, guys, I've saved both these files, and I'm going to refresh this box. So let's go ahead and say uh, Julian uh, Quirk is my username, and my password is going to be, well, I'm not going to tell you, it's going to be, uh, hold on. All right, so now I've entered my super long, super safe password, and I'm going to click on the login button here. So we'll click on login, and here we go, guys. It says my username is Julian Quirk, and my password is my super secret password. Uh oh, something's going wrong here. Why can't I? There we go. So my password is my super secret password. So, uh, guys, you might have actually just found out my secret password. Uh oh, that is terrible news. All right, guys, so as you can see, our potential for building a super cool web application just skyrocketed because now we can take information from a user. You know when you create a comment on Facebook? Well, this is exactly how it works. That comment gets sent to the Facebook servers. The Facebook servers process that information and store it in their database. And then when someone's trying to access that particular comment, well, Facebook will send out the information that you wrote into your comment back out to the user's browser. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this class. We're going to finish things up again. And before that, guys, just going to show you guys what's going to happen in the near future. We've covered the basic syntax, guys, of PHP. Our next step is to set up a MySQL database or even a MariaDB database, which is what we'll actually be doing. We'll learn how to store data on that database using PHP. And finally, guys, we'll learn about how we can take information from a database and put it into a web page dynamically with PHP. So I hope that's all exciting and that's all coming up in the next two lessons next week, which is the final week of this course, would you believe? All right, guys, quick summary. We covered, of course, everything to do with PHP. We also had a look at how to create a basic HTML form and how to get PHP to process that data. We'll show you guys a practical example of actually processing data from a user in lessons.